This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. Welcome to our 3D carnation cake video. In this video, we're going to cover a bunch of different things that will allow you to get this cute little 3D carnation cake design. We're going to go over mixing our colors, the bags and tips that we're going to use. We're going to show you how we coated our cake with our lovely tan buttercream. We're going to go over the steps to building the buds half open and full carnations. And then we're going to show you how we place them on our cake to make a fun and beautiful design. And you can see this one is a nice design that's piped mostly on the sides of the cake and is pretty forgiving because we've got a lot of leaves and things going on there. So if you're just starting working with bags and piping and you're a little um, little uncertain about doing piping on the sides, this is a nice one to give a try. So our first step for our cake is mixing colors and we're going to mix three. We're going to start with a light brown or tan color, mix a little green for our stems, stamens, leaves, and also some great purple for our carnation blossoms. We're going to be using all simple or American style buttercream, which I've got some in the bowl, and several colors of liquid gel food coloring. First, Buckeye Brown and Coal Black. We also have some Lemon Yellow and Royal Blue. And then we've got Neon Bright Pink and some Violet. So to start with, We've got just a little bit of that brown and black out here on the lid of a container and we're going to use toothpicks to dab it in because I'm just trying to make a nice subtle light shade on this brown. So we're just going to start out with just a few tiny little specks with that toothpick with the brown and a couple with the black as well. We're just going for a nice light tan shade. This is going to provide a nice subtle kind of background with just a little bit of color to it so that our flowers can really pop off of it. So we've got that color in there. We'll get it mixed around and check it out. I want a nice light shade of tan. I think that's going to do the trick. It's got just a little bit color in there. It's no longer white. It's giving me a nice kind of sand color. I think that's going to be beautiful. We're going to make a nice kind of amethyst color purple and it's going to have some intensity and we want something for it to pop off of. Next, we're going to make some green and I want it to be a nice kind of medium tone mossy shade. So I'm going to use some specks of my lemon yellow. Less of my royal blue. And then I'm just going to give it a hint of both that black and also a tiny bit of that brown. And we want this color to be darker, deeper, and richer than the tan we made, but we don't want it to be too intense. So that might be just about perfect. I think maybe it just needs a touch more yellow, just to give it a little bit of brightness. And just a little bit more of a smidge of that brown. And I think that's going to be an absolutely beautiful color on top of that tan. It's got that nice kind of sagey moss feel. And I want it to be more towards the yellow because I'm going to make my flowers purple and yellow and purple are nice contrast together. So pulling that green closer towards the yellow is going to give it more contrast against that purple. So it's a nice medium shade of green. We're going to put this aside and make our purple. So we want to make a nice amethyst, kind of dusty shade of purple. So think of things like uh, amethyst and rose quartz. I'm going to start with drops of my violet. Just do like two in there. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of black, a tiny bit of that brown, because we're trying to make kind of dusty, dull shades. And then a couple of that nice bright pink. I just want to change the tone of that purple a tiny bit and we'll mix this around and see where we are and we'll adjust as needed. I'm 
Right now we have a nice shade of purple, but it's still pretty light, but it's heading in the right direction. I can see a nice little vein there that's more along the lines of where I want to be, where the color's a little more intense. So I'm just going to go a few more drops of purple, kind of repeat what I've been doing, just a little bit of that black, a little bit of that brown, and more of that pink. And I might actually end up just adding a drop of pink, but I want to give this a mix around first, see where I am. Colors are always easier to make darker. It's a lot harder if you need to um, lighten them up significantly. So that's a nice intensity, and I think I just want to pull it a little bit towards the pink. So I'm just going to add a drop and see where that gets us. I think that's right where we need to be. We've got a nice shade with a nice kind of intensity to it that's going to deepen really well. And it's got that kind of dusty amethyst look to it. And I think it's going to read nicely against the other colors that we made. For this project, I'm going to use two 12 inch disposable decorating bags. I have one fitted with standard size coupler. And to start with, I have a number two tip on it. So just a plain round tip. You can use it number one, two, or three, just something small. I've also got a number seven on standby. So that's just another one of those plain round tips, larger size, and also a number 352. So this one is a leaf tip and it's got that nice V-shaped opening. I love those. And then the second bag, we have a number 124K. So it's one of those thin Korean petal tips down in there and it's just directly in the bag. And we have that with our purple, our tan we're using to coat our cake. So we have a plain iced white cake, right? It's just covered in white buttercream. I've had it in the fridge, so it's nice and firm. And what we're gonna do is take a little bit of that soft tan color, and we're just going to coat the outside. So the idea is just to get a thin layer on top, almost as if you're covering it with a layer of fondant, except it's buttercream. So it's a great way to put on colors, whether they're light or dark, so that it's just coating the outside. I'm gonna do it just the way I would, so we're icing a normal cake. Just get it all over the top and then all over the sides. And this is going to give us a nice backdrop. And it can be a little bit kind of nebulous and spotty. It doesn't have to be completely opaque. It can be a little transparent in some spots. I sometimes think that makes a nice kind of varied effect. We just want something that'll help our little blossoms stand out and make that color really, really pop. So it's just a nice, soft, neutral tan color. I'm just going to get a layer smoothed on there. And then just make sure that it's even. And when you like the way it looks, you can put it back in the fridge. So when you like the way it looks, you can go ahead and put it back in the fridge so it's nice and firm. That way it's easy to work on when you're ready to start piping your flowers. Just make sure you get the tops there. And if you need to, you can go over it a few more times just to even out the color if you'd like. So carnations. We're gonna use a couple of different tips and a few different techniques to build up our carnations. And the first thing we're gonna talk about are the different little techniques and parts. And I'm gonna start out with my 124K, so my nice Korean petal tip. And the first thing I'm gonna do is make little fans. And these are usually gonna be flat against the surface. And you wanna start with that slightly fatter end. Imagine it's the center of your petal. And we're gonna pull out 
ruffle slowly, and then pull back to create those little fans. So just out, ruffle, and back. And you see you'll get a nice fat kind of square-ish shaped on the end petal. And then the next thing we're gonna do for volume is make folded petals. So feel, I always wanna go with, I'm trying to make little triangular kind of folded up wedges, and these are gonna have dimension. So I'm gonna make a nice kind of squiggly pattern and build them up. And it's a little hard to describe, but I wanna start making that little fan and then building it up. That way you get ruffles and ridges, you can see, that are gonna fill up that interior area and give us, there we go, that volume we need to make a nice carnation and really build it up into a nice rounded mound. Since we're doing this on the side of our cake, we're gonna make some stems, some leaves, and that under part, right, those little sepals that are underneath. And to start with, I'm gonna use my 352, and I'm gonna make some leaves. But in this case, I'm not gonna pause the way I normally would and let the leaf build up a lot and get fat at the base. I'm gonna keep them kind of long and skinny. So you wanna adjust your rate to change the shape of the leaves that you're making. So same as always with leaves, with this 352 tip, one of the points is gonna to be touching my surface. I'm gonna squeeze and then pull. And you'll see, right, the faster you start pulling, the skinnier and narrow those leaves are gonna be. So it's almost a little hard to show because you have to go almost instantaneously, right, to get that size we want. So the faster I pull, the narrower those leaves will be, and the more they're gonna look like the leaves on carnations, because they're kind of short and skinny, and they come out in little twos and threes. For our number two tip, we're gonna pipe some lines, and we're gonna do them at kind of intersecting, so think Vs and Ys. We're gonna make some little kind of beautiful, organic kind of shapes. Just make sure you're touching the surface, Pull up and away, let that line float into place and touch down anywhere you wanna end it. And then anytime we wanna make a little branch, just pick a spot to start in and start piping again. And we'll make some little stems to put our carnations on. And then finally, I'll change to my number seven tip. So I changed to my number seven tip and we're gonna make some little U shapes. So think of it a little bit like drawing a line, but we're gonna do a little curved shape and then put another line in the middle. And this is gonna make those nice bases for my flowers. Right, so nice U shape with a line in the middle. And that'll give us that area underneath where those sepals are still kind of tightly closed. They have those long kind of almost urn shaped bases to carnations. So there we have all of our techniques, right? Our little fan and folded up ruffle petals, our skinny leaves, our lines, and those little U-shaped bases. We're gonna combo those all together to make our carnations. So now we're gonna talk about how we're gonna use those techniques that we just did to build our different types of flowers. And we're gonna do full blossoms, buds and some kind of half open ones. For the full open blossoms, we're gonna start with those three fans and you wanna think about the surface as if it's got a little circle on it, just like your flower nail. And you're gonna pipe those three kind of equal distance apart and imagine that they're filling up the outside edge of that circle with the outside edge of that petal. And then we're gonna take those folded ones and start going in between those where those little gaps are and filling in with those ruffles and that volume. And we're just gonna go around until we get a nice looking carnation that's nice and full and has a beautiful domed shape. For the buds, I wanna pipe my little base right? And just do a little fan on top. So very simple. We're just going to do that little fan and you can do the fan first and then do the little sepals or you can do the sepals first, whatever works for you. I kind of like doing the fan first and then putting the base on top for these just because then it kind of covers up the bottom edge of it. And then we're going to do some little half open ones on the side. For these, I like to pipe that base first, get a fan in there, and then I'm going to do some of those folded ruffles so they're kind of coming out towards me, right, away from the cake, and that back end is gonna to be touching it. 
And this is gonna give me a nice little look of some kind of half open buds, maybe buds that are just starting to open and aren't all the way there, and some smaller carnations. And this will give us a nice little variety on the side of our cake. And we're gonna combo that with the stems and the leaves. So the next thing we're gonna do is pull our cake out. We've got that nice thin layer of tan buttercream on it. And we're gonna start placing our blossoms and kind of laying out our cake. So we've practiced our techniques, we thought about what we're gonna do, and we're ready to start working on our cake. And I've just got a nice barbecue skewer and I'm just gonna mock up one of my carnation stems. So I wanna get myself a nice little spot to come all the way to the top and I'm gonna have a blossom up there and I'm gonna branch out, maybe have a nice half one over here and a cute little bud down there. So I'll have flowers at all three levels and then I can go back in and put in things like leaves and maybe add some little flourishes to my stems. So I wanna get my number two tip on and I'll start by putting down my stems. And when you're doing lines on the side of the cake, don't worry too much. About getting them perfect carnations have kind of little lumpy stems. I'm just floating right, right above the surface of the cake, right? So unlike when I'm dropping a line down on top, I'm just pulling just a tiny bit away from the surface to let that frosting flow out nice and smoothly, but so it is also attaching. And then any place I wanna add another little stem, just go back and connect, right? And that'll give you beautiful looking stems. They don't have to be perfect lines, so just kind of drag lightly just right hovering away. And you can see that'll give you a nice, smooth, beautiful line that has just a little bit of variation to it. Make it look nice and natural. I'm gonna change to my number seven. And I'm gonna do those sepals for my full and my half open, just so that they're in there and underneath those ruffly petals. So nice. U shape. And I'm going to leave that one blank. I'm actually going to do it on top of the little fan. And I'm going to just start working on those little carnations. I'm going to start down here. And we'll just do a tiny little fan. Just give a nice little wrinkle, right? I'll cover up the base of that with those sepals. So it'll actually obscure just a little bit of that purple and it's gonna look nice and tiny and delicate. And now I'm just gonna go up on top, let it kind of cascade over the side a little bit and start making that full one and use your turntable and rotate your cake as needed and change the position of your bag if needed. You can see it's actually easier to work that direction and kind of go. And you can see I've got those nice three little base fans on there. I've got some of that green that it's gonna peek out from underneath. So it's gonna look nice and natural. And now I can just fill in with those nice ruffled folds. So I'm gonna start in between two of them and just start working. And you can see that gives me some beautiful volume. Just let those nice, beautiful ruffles fold into place. And every time I finish, I kind of pull it towards the middle. And since these little wavy ruffles of buttercream are so delicate because it's that 124K, you're really using those ridges to kind of support each other. And that's what's making the structure for this. So just keep going with those ruffles until you get a beautiful, 
puffed up carnation with a lot of volume to it. You can see now it has that mounded, ruffled, beautiful effect that you can see from all three sides. And then when I want to do my little halves, I'm just gonna go in and start touching that green. So once we get some little fans pressed against the back, we're gonna go ahead and put on some cute little ruffles in the front. And don't be afraid to change your angle and get in there whatever way you need to, just to make some nice, beautiful little ruffles on the side. And you can see that gives us the lovely little look of a carnation. I can switch back to my number seven tip and put a base on my little bud, and then switch over to my 352 to make some leaves. So anywhere you need to cover up or add a little interest, put in a little color, you can give yourself a little leaf. So if you have any spots on those lines on the stems that you don't like, add a leaf, cover it up. Once I have one of these great little groupings going, I can keep going around my cake and add as many as I want. So we kept working on our cake and you can see we've got three of those nice full open carnations on top, a bunch of halves and small little buds. And I just went in and I added some little leaves anywhere I needed a little extra bulk on the bottom of the cake just to kind of help balance things out or anywhere I had a little line or a flub that I didn't like it's easy enough to cover it with a leaf and you can see that gives us a beautiful full design most of it is piped on the side of the cake and it's a nice introductory way to pipe on the sides of the cake if you're not used to handling the bags of frosting yet and really piping lines and getting them smooth and clean so it's a nice fun easy style if you want to make a floral cake and do some piping on the sides if you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.